Hey guys, it's Randy, and welcome to my channel, Zero Waste, Zero Worries, where I talk about saving the earth and inherently ourselves. So packaging is everywhere, especially plastic packaging. If you go into any grocery store or business and take a good look around, or a decent look or a mediocre look, you can see that almost everything is packaged in plastic or some form of packaging that can't be recycled most of the time. And generally this packaging is absolutely pointless, but companies package in plastic or package in some other material because it's convenient for consumers and then, you know, they buy it, they make money, it's a whole profit game. So they don't really have any accountability for what happens to the packaging and their product after the product is consumed. And that creates a lot of waste. On top of all the packaging waste, we have a lot of food waste. And on top of all the food waste we have, we have a lot of clothing waste, as the clothing industry is the second largest polluter in the world. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about ways that you can avoid those types of waste and not add to that specific type of consumerism. And as you can tell from the title of this video, I'm also going to be talking about cheap alternatives to all of my tips because I know to be able to fully participate in the zero waste movement is kind of a privilege. To be able to purchase any of the items I'm going to be talking about is a privilege and to be able to get access to like a farmer's market or something is a privilege. I don't even have access to a farmer's market myself unless I drive an hour and 30 minutes, which is counterproductive. So moving straight into the video, talking about my first zero waste tip, which is to start using reusable bags. Now my family and I have a lot, a lot of these types of reusable bags that fold out and have a flat bottom. This one specifically is from HEB. I know there are some that Target sells and probably other miscellaneous stores, but this one specifically is made out of recycled water bottles itself because this was their Earth Day bag, so I think it's pretty cool. And it's just got handles and honestly, whatever this is for. But these do hold so many groceries when we go and get them on top of other materials that we get from any other store that we bring them in. So these are such a great investment if you are willing to make that investment and I do highly recommend them. On top of those types of reusable bags, I also own some canvas bags that are also pretty large and pretty durable. The reason I have two types of bags is because I like to leave the previous bag to my parents because they have a flat bottom and my parents do buy some some stuff in packaging and they need to lay it flat so I use these for my own fruits and veggies and I kind of leave the other bags for my parents so the cheap alternative to these reusable bags is one to not use a bag at all and I know if you have a lot of larger items you can't really avoid that but if you do have some small items you can just tell the cashier hey I don't need a bag thank you anyway and you just take it out in your hands or if you got a backpack or a purse that you can put it in you can put it in there a second cheaper option is if you have an HEB located near you, which I think they're Texas exclusive, so I'm sorry if you don't live in Texas, but uh, HEB actually gives away free bags on Earth Day, so that's an idea. Moving on to my second zero waste tip, which is to start using reusable produce bags. I've got these from Amazon, and it's an alternative for one of those plastic flimsy bags that you put like your meat in or you put tomatoes and you know the flimsy ones yeah so instead I use one of the these and when I put them on the conveyor belt for the cashier to check them out I open it so they can kind of see inside and do their cashier thing I know a lot a lot a lot a lot of people do not have access to these so the cheaper alternative for this is to just put your tomatoes or put your oranges into your shopping cart without a bag and I know a lot of people are uncomfortable with doing that but that's the reason that you wash your fruits and veggies before you eat them guys if you're really uncomfortable with just putting your produce into the cart without any kind of packaging you could start reusing those plastic flimsy bags um, I know I when we used to use them I would like tear them open and just, like throw them straight away But if you do want to help out saving the earth You can maybe try to reuse those and don't rip them open right away now My third zero waste tip is to start using a reusable water bottle There are a lot of people who are saving a lot of water bottles without even actually realizing what they're doing They just know that they're using their reusable cup because they bought it But you know it is one of the biggest ways to contribute to less plastic pollution because we use so many water bottles annually. So if you have the financial means, invest in a reusable water bottle. Mine is by the brand Zozurushi. My brother 
a couple years ago got one of these from Walmart and then he didn't want it anymore so he gave it to me and then I went to state speech and I left it in our results room and I was really sad about it because I was like yeah I have a secondhand water bottle and I didn't have to create a demand for anything and then uh, then the uh, the cleaning staff threw it away so I had to get another one off of Amazon. I know a lot of people who have a water bottle by the brand Clean Canteen, some by Keep Cup. Um, what is the other one I'm thinking of? Hydro Flasks. I have not used any of those brands, but I know people swear by them. I love my Zozurushi. It keeps things really cold or it keeps it really hot. And something that I like that I don't see other brands doing is like a pop-up lid. I really like that. And I will put the link to this water bottle in the description. And if you don't have the resources or the financial means to get a reusable water bottle, you could start reusing a plastic water bottle. So the next time that you have a plastic water bottle, drink it, wash it, and then reuse it instead of just throwing it away. The plastic water bottles that we buy are meant for one use and then throwing them away, but they are designed, the material of them is designed to last on the earth forever. So I would say it's probably pretty durable. On the note of using your own containers and mugs to fill up water, don't forget that there are water fountains everywhere. I know some people who don't really like to use the water fountain. I haven't gotten sick yet, so I'm just gonna keep doing it until I get sick. My last note on the whole reusable water bottle topic is that you can take them into places like Starbucks and they will put whatever drink you want from Starbucks into the cup. And a lot of the times they'll just charge you for a refill. Pro tip. My fourth zero waste tip is to start using reusable straws and this is kind of a staple for the zero waste life. I've got these stainless steel straws. I know companies make bamboo straws and silicone straws and a plethora of straws from other materials but I just ordered these off of Amazon and I really like them. These are my straws. I will put the link for these straws in the description below and I'm just going to go ahead and say that anything that I got off of Amazon, I'll, j I'll just put the link in the description. If you cannot buy a reusable stainless steel straw or a bamboo straw or a silicone straw or whatever type of reusable straw, maybe think about starting to say no to straws in general. So if you go to a restaurant and somebody is giving or is offering you a straw, just say, hey, I don't need it. Thank you though. Or a lot of the times in smoothies, keep this in mind guys, in smoothies and in coffees, they'll just put the straw in there without even asking or gesturing you with the straw. So make sure when you order those types of beverages that you ask if they put a straw in it to begin with. But if you have a disability which makes you absolutely need to use a straw, I would suggest reusing a plastic straw that's given to you at a restaurant. That way you're still reducing the amount of straws that you're using. And plastic straws will last more than one beverage. It's kind of crazy the amount of straws that we throw away and they're still perfectly good and they could probably last like a hundred more drinks. But we just use them for one. That's all. My fifth zero waste tip is to invest in some kind of container that you can take to restaurants with you and take your leftovers. I recently purchased this stainless steel container. This is upside down. This stainless steel container from Amazon and it's called the Green Lunch Bento Box. I haven't been able to use it that much so I'm not gonna give a full review over it, but I bought it specifically for college when I go out to eat and I have leftovers. So a stainless steel container is one option, but you can use any Tupperware option that you have already at your house. Always use what you already have before you buy something else. Um, I, I bought that because I'm going to college though and I don't want to take my mom's Tupperware with me. Tupperware and stainless steel lunch boxes can get kind of pricey though. So if you don't have the resources or the financial means to buy one of those, you can keep an eye out for what restaurants give you in terms of to-go plates. Chili's in specific gives out these really bulky plastic containers that in my house we've been using just for any type of leftovers that we make here or we do take them out to when we go to restaurants. Even if a restaurant gives you styrofoam, you can reuse it, just wash it. We live in a completely, we live in a completely disposable society that Wash your stuff and reuse it, guys. Talking about something to put your food in leads me to my sixth zero waste tip, which is to buy in bulk. And when you buy in bulk, to use your own containers from home. A lot of people will go out and buy like a whole set of mason jars, and that is not cheap. So 
I'm, I'm not even giving the expensive side of this spectrum. I'm just gonna give the cheap side. Just reuse jars that you have from home. This was an old like marinara sauce jar. I've got an old peanut butter jar full of popcorn kernels in here. I love popcorn. But in the zero waste lifestyle, people will take these to grocery stores where you can buy in bulk. I know some HEBs have a bulk section. Most Sprouts have a bulk section. I would assume that some Whole Foods do have a bulk section. I've personally never been, so I'm not gonna vouch for that. But just keep an eye out for any stores that sell things in bulk and you can put them in your own containers. But if you're using a heavy container like a glass jar instead of a peanut butter jar like the one I have my popcorn kernels in, you want to, one, ask the cashier if you can use it for the bulk item but two ask them if they can weigh it ahead of time that way when you check out the weight of whatever jar you're using isn't adding on to whatever the cost is for the product that you have in it by the way that whole process is called tearing your jars i've never had to do it because the jars that i do use to buy in bulk are peanut butter jars and they weigh virtually nothing so there's not even any point in me asking them to weigh it ahead of time Moving on to my seventh zero waste tip, which is to start using reusable hand towels, reusable handkerchiefs, reusable cotton pads to remove your makeup. All of these can be found on Amazon. A lot of these can be found in stores. Actually, I know reusable cotton pads have started to be sold in places like HEB and Central Market. So if you have one of those near you, you can go see if they have those there. Something that's even more all-purpose than those are these bamboo towels that one of my teachers gave me as a graduation gift. This can be used to remove your makeup. This can be used to dry your hands. This can be used to blow your nose. These are so versatile and I absolutely love them. They are washable so you tear one off and then you use it for whatever you need to use it for and then you wash it. I've only had to use three, I think, within probably the month that I've had them. So these are really nice and it is an alternative that could potentially be cheaper in the short run. It's not cheaper in the long run. My eighth zero waste tip is to get yourself a cutlery set. In here are, this was in my last video actually, but I've got um, a fork, knife, and spoon and I usually have a straw in here as well and I take this everywhere with me and it is so handy dandy. Uh, this is one of the best investments that I've ever made and I love it a whole lot. Got this on Amazon, are you surprised? Probably not. If you don't have the resources to get one of those, you can start to kind of create your own set, maybe with the silverware you have from home, or if you don't wanna use mom's silverware, you can get some plastic cutlery that is given to you from a restaurant or something and just reuse the plastic cutlery. So once you've got silverware from home or plastic cutlery from a restaurant, you can kind of put it in any little pouch that you have or maybe even just take them loosely with you and now you have your own cutlery set that is free. My ninth zero waste tip is to start swapping your liquid shampoo, conditioner, and body wash for solid bars of soap. I know companies specifically make shampoo bars, conditioner bars, body wash bars. I don't use a conditioner bar, but I do use a shampoo bar. I just started using this one recently. It's got a cardboard box that I can recycle, by the way. Anyway, I have started using this shampoo bar from a company I think is pronounced Brew. I don't want to say that for a fact, but... I do like it so far. I've only been using it for a week though, so I'm not ready to give like a full review. Before this, I was using a JR Liggett's shampoo bar that worked pretty well, but I was having to buy it online because I could not find it within like an 100 mile radius of me. But I found this at Walmart, so this is more environmentally friendly in terms of shipping gas emissions and packaging, you know. If you don't want to buy all of the shampoo bars and the conditioner bars and the body wash bars, you can just use one bar of soap. When I went to my college orientation recently, I just took one bar of soap. I used it for my face, my hair, my body, and it worked completely fine. So if, you, if that's an option that you want to utilize, it's cheaper and you will have access to just regular bars of soap much faster than you would have access to something like a shampoo or conditioner bar. My 10th zero waste tip is to compost your food. America has such a bad, bad problem with food waste. I figured out yesterday that 40% of the food that we produce in America goes uneaten. That is 
almost half the food that we produce. But if you have an apple core or a banana peel or the top to a pineapple or something, you can compost those things instead of just throwing them in the trash where they're not going to do anything other than go into a landfill and have CO2 emissions emit. And you know, it's not productive to just throw away your food. So if you have the option to start composting your food scraps. A lot of people have a compost bin where they'll put all of their food scraps along with some leaves and stuff and then it will turn into a soil and they can use that in their garden or something. I do not have one of those bins. I participate in the cheap way which I literally just chuck my food in a pile in our yard. Um, yeah. Some people will bury their compost but the area in which I throw my food scraps has cactus all around it. so. I don't bury it unless I want to walk through cactus. My 11th zero waste tip is to start refusing free items. This is so easy if you don't necessarily enjoy all of the free pins and free folders and stuff people give out, which I don't find any value out of free stuff. Some people really find some value out of free stuff. I know a lot of people's mentality is to just take it because it's there and it's free and it's already purchased on their end. But you can make a difference in numbers if a lot of people started to refuse pins, the company that's giving them out would notice, hey, we had like 50 pins left over, we can order 50 less, which means 50 less have to be produced. So you can make a difference, especially in numbers. My 12th and final zero waste tip is to start purchasing your clothes and products second hand. I've started doing this and it has been so infinitely cheaper that it doesn't even need a cheaper alternative. At this point, I think I've thrifted almost my entire college wardrobe and I haven't spent collectively $200 on my own clothes, probably 150 between everything that I've gotten, which is so much cheaper than what I would normally be spending on clothes. And they look perfectly fine. This shirt is secondhand. Buying secondhand doesn't just pertain to clothes. You can get furniture secondhand, you can get jewelry secondhand, you can get electronics secondhand. So when you buy secondhand, you don't create a demand for a new product and it's a heck of a lot cheaper. So this is always an option that I want to be able to exercise. It's, it's so viable and I don't ever wanna go back to buying items firsthand. So those are my 12 zero waste tips and they're cheap alternatives. Some of these tips don't seem like they make the largest amount of difference, but I absolutely promise you that you would be amazed to realize how less you are throwing away when you implement these tips. It took me two months to fill up my trash can in my room recently, and it usually took me like a week before I started transitioning to a zero waste lifestyle. If you incorporate any of these tips, please let me know. I will leave my social media down below. Go ahead and tag me in a post or you know DM me or something. I absolutely love when I see people implementing the the things that I preach about because it makes it just makes me really happy and it makes me feel like the responsibility that I've talked about in previous videos is being fulfilled so like I said if you implement any of these tips let me know thank you guys so much for watching this video if you want to see more videos like this go ahead and subscribe and maybe hit the notification bell while you're at it reason being is because YouTube has said that they're not going to be notifying every single subscriber when you post a video so if you turn that notification bell on you do have a larger chance of seeing my videos. I will see you guys or more like you guys will see me in the next video. Bye!